it's been fascinating to see how the problems haven't really changed, right, across continents, across developing and developed nations. But the key ingredient is that I think this concept about it's man versus machine, you know, when you talk about a robot, and, and the way sort of the developing nations need to look at it, it's actually man with a machine versus a challenge. And I think that changes the whole perspective of how you view AI. Uh, and I'll give you a great example. So if you look at the Indian subcontinent, uh, and very close to what, what South Africa goes through, uh, semi-urban, rural, not really you know, great healthcare providers out there. And suddenly you get these devices which can latch onto your smartphones. And you can get blood samples and urine samples. And just the quality of life improves within seconds, right? Uh, and that kind of change is fascinating. Um, on the flip side, um, coming from a telco environment, uh, across the developed sort of nations, uh, the networks haven't really changed, right? And we've had a lot of discourse about fiber and copper and everything else. You go to, you, you talk about AT&T, you go to Telstra, you go to BT, most of these large companies still exist with multiple technologies. And, and the developing nations actually have an advantage at some point. How do, they, how do they leap across and not go through those learning cycles and learn from the developed countries? But it's important to ensure how do you bring that in into the system? How fast does the technology come in? And how does it really help the economic power? You know, how does it bolster the middle class to enable to, them to learn, and especially the next generation. I think that's extremely important, and that's the differential that you see in developed and developing countries. I think AI can make a massive difference in developing countries if you use properly.